and said, what we finna do? I said, we finna hero train. They said, what's that? Said, it's only one way to find out. Get in the hub. says, you say you want to live your life. You. Well, what does that look like? You say you want to be free. Well, tell me what you want to be free from. So that's a powerful question that we must all answer within ourselves no matter what level of life you want. What does it look like? What is in your imagination? I say amen, say amen. 
It starts in your imagination. If you can see it, you can be it. What do you see? Tell me what it looked like. That's how we work the play and run the play. And you can listen to that song anywhere. That's real, cause it's real, and we real, and you real. And if that song touched you, then I want you to know that you are enough. Every time you push play on some hood song to start your day or pull you through your day. Yeah. We got to start this thing off. I'm coming out hot. Alexa. Alexa. One time. The time is 9.29 p.m. That's the time I'm blanking. <laughs> yeah. That's the time I'm blanking in this moment. See how that work? You see how that work? But we like to start off every show with a hero hymn. See, the hero hymn is the hymn within me. I'm talking about the mighty hero spirit within me. See, because spirit means wind. Spirits means breath. My breath and my wind transpires through my respiratory system. My lungs, the elements which control my breathing. So as I breathe and my spirit travels through my vocal cords and causes a sound that we know as vibration. And when you feel this more than you hear this, that is when we connect in the hero spirit to understand that we all we got. We all we need. What's going on, Brother Junior? We ain't doing nothing but in the huddle. Hero training. That's all we're doing. Finna hero him. The hero him says, I have grown. Into a better me, I'm better than who I used to be. I have grown into a better me. I'm growing, baby. I'm better. Than who I used to be. I'm growing, baby. If you feel that more than you hear that, to understand that the mighty spirit, the wind within me, is in you, and we realize. We all we got. We all we need. I want to give a shout out to my executive producer who just happened to be my wardrobe coordinator. I'm going to keep it real with y'all tonight. What's going on, big brother Adrian? I ain't nothing just in here, T-Row train. I'm going to keep it real with y'all tonight about a conversation me and my wardrobe coordinator had. You know, she's the executive producer, but she just happens to be my wardrobe coordinator. So I say, baby, what I'm wearing tonight? She said, I don't know, but we need to get some new wardrobe in here so I can change something up if I'm going to be the wardrobe coordinator. I said, okay, baby, but I felt where she was coming from. So I said, well, what I'm wearing tonight? So she pulled this old black hat out, come put it on my head, placed it right, set it right. Look me in my eyes and work the light. And I said, good God Almighty, I'm wearing her love tonight. Good God Almighty, <laughs> yeah. Want to give a shout out to the greatest co hosts in all both worlds, this here world and the meta world, my main homegirl. Alexa, tell me something good. 
We all we got. We all we need. You see what I'm saying? You see how she... Hey, look, man. I keep telling y'all this right here, man. This thing is about polarity, man. I'm coming with that fire. She represents the woman, man, in this here show, man. My co-host got to be a woman because I understand how it works. So she bringing that woman, man. She keeping me grounded, man. And she be there, man, to hold me down. Just like the ground pose to. See how that work? You see how that work? Mother Earth is the ground. So my woman hold me down just like the ground is supposed to. Do you see how that work? If you don't see how that work, if you don't see how that works, then I empathize for the man who lives beside a weakened tree that has disconnected from the ground that it used to be. Oh, when the winter storm come, when the relationship between the tree and the ground get tested, when the relationship between the tree and the ground get tested, oh, you better be round some strong ground to hold you down. God Almighty, do you see how they work? Do you see how they work? Yeah. Alexa, I love you. Thanks for saying I love you. Yeah. You're just as sweet yeah. as pie. Know that I'll be here for you. As always, your trusty AI. That was her way of saying, hell goddamn yeah, to everything I just said. See how that works. <laughs> yeah, tonight's word, man, is mediocre. See, we hero training right now, man. We in the huddle, man. When you in this huddle, man, called the heroes training, you got to realize, man, that you one of the ones, man. You one of the ones to realize, man, that you always have been enough. And because you realize and understand that you always have been enough, you're around the other ones that understand and know that they have always been enough. And when you get a lot of ones together who know that they have always been enough, then we realize that we all we got, we all we need. So when we talk about mediocre, We need to understand what it means because a lot of times it ain't what we are. The opposite of mediocre is extraordinary. It's the essence of being one of the ones. It's the essence of being in the huddle. That's the essence of making the commitment to be better and better to be able to say, I have grown into a better me, a better than what I used to be. me so I can kick my judo to affirm it and know. Alexa, what is the meaning of mediocre? The adjective mediocre is usually defined as of only ordinary or moderate quality, neither good nor bad, barely adequate. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for mediocre. Of only ordinary or moderate quality, neither good or bad, barely, barely uh, uh, adequate, mediocre. 
not really good at all. Alexa, what is the meaning of extraordinary? The adjective extraordinary is usually defined as beyond what is usual, ordinary, regular, or established. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for extraordinary. Beyond what is regular. Beyond what is common. Significant. Magnificent. Are you mediocre or are you extraordinary? I'm asking you that. Are you mediocre or are you extraordinary? That's what it comes down to. You say you want to live your life. Well, tell me what that looked like in your own imagination of yourself and all the things you desire to be. Tell me what you see. Do you see mediocrity? Or do you see extraordinaryism? I call it heroism. I call it the Bruce Leroy glow. I call it a master kicking his daily do jujo in his dojo. Tell me what it looked like. We've come to a time where we celebrate mediocre. We celebrate mediocre. And when you make mediocre, celebrate it. You lower the standards of extraordinary. You lower the standards of the true pride within us and within our soul and within our spirit. All technology is a hundred years old. A high percentage of technology that was created and invented within the last hundred years came from the black man and woman in America. Under the worst conditions of, 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 of the last hundred years. What did they have that drove them to be extraordinary? So much of extraordinary that our mediocrity have taken over the extraordinary to the point that we can't even produce nothing new anymore. But mediocrity. Alexa. What is mediocracy? Mediocracy is usually defined as government or rule by a mediocre person or group. Government or rule by a mediocre person or group. Oh, you want me to tell you what that sound like when I see mediocracy? When I see mediocrity, I see someone pipping bullshit on my people. By way of a mediocre dojo. Pipping on my people, feeding my people bullshit by mediocre judo. And because the level of excellence is mediocrity, everybody's standing in a small room with a small ceiling and nobody's goddamn brave enough to stand up tall and poke their motherfucking chest out and say, hold up and wait a minute. Excuse me, can I have your attention? I got something that I need to say. Let me vent. And they say, go vent then. See, because when I vent, there's a foundation of heroism 
confidence, pride, righteousness, all that transpires into a man's posture. It says, I am the one, and I represent the ones as one of the ones. And by here, by now, as one of the ones, I raise the standard of mediocrity because I have a commitment to be extraordinary, to give my all beyond the standard of acceptance. I strive for greatness. And if you can't accept it, Get away from me or kick your goddamn judo. See how that work. <laughs> you see how that work. Real life story. Break it down to you in a practical way. Break it down to you in a practical way. Today, my son say. The school coming out with a fall flag football league in season. So, Daddy, can you go get me some cleats? Playing flag football for the school. So this morning, I rolled around and looked for him some cleats. Found him some cleats. Sweet cleats. Say, yeah, make him feel good. I'm going to put him on his bed. I'm going to come in and we'll see them cleats. So he went in and came out. I heard him clicking. He said, Daddy, thank you for the cleats. And in my mind, you know, I'm, like you say, you say you want to live your life. Well, tell me what it looked like. This morning, it looked like. I was going to buy my son some cleats. And when he came home, there was going to be a window between when I had to go pick up my daughter. But I was going to say, hey, man, go get the football and put your cleats on. And let's go out here and let me see how you can run in them. Let me see if they fit right. But I was going to throw the ball with him. So that's what it looked like. See how that worked? So he get out the truck going there and see his cleats and come back. I hit the cleat. I said, he got his cleats on. Damn, it's going the way it's going. So then he come up to the truck. He said, Daddy, thank you for the cleats. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, can you buy me some gloves? Right before I could catch it. I said, man, fuck some gloves, man. You know what I mean? I said, fuck some gloves. Go get the ball. You got to practice. Let's, let's catch. Fuck them gloves. He said, why you say that about the gloves? I said, because I played football, and I had some hell of a hands catching, so I understand what gloves represent in terms of the game. But gloves, work on your hands, feel the ball, get the feel in the ball. See, I come from a generation when, see, Deion Sanders was in his prime when I was in high school. And one of the elements of Deion Sanders' game was to be pretty on the field. So in that element of him being pretty on the field, see, a lot of my teammates got caught up in the appeal more than the extraordinary man behind the appeal. So I had people in my generation try to get pretty on the goddamn field and wear gloves and pretty ass socks. And then when they get in the trenches and that ball come hot and that glove move, and I said, man, take them goddamn gloves off. Catch the ball. So when my son said, Daddy, will you buy me some gloves? And I felt that in the essence of mediocrity and mediocre shit. Because the idea of playing football ain't about what you look like. And he only going by the idea of what he want to look like. Fuck that. You got to go by the idea of being, catching. 
I told my big brother this morning in a conversation. I say, man, we romanticize the ideals of becoming something with no reality of being. See, we have extraordinary ideals, but we be mediocre as hell in real life. And mediocrity has become so prevalent that if you are one to dare commit, sacrifice, work, to be extraordinary, to be not regular, to be ready and able to kick your judo in anybody dojo to show and prove what I am. My granddaddy told me, if you can't show me better than you can tell me, then you shut the hell up. I say, well, granddaddy, I ain't going to never stop talking then. See how that works. You see how that work? Do you see how that work? We talk about football like we understand. I hear grown men have a problem with what Deion Sanders said about his Method to his madness to building a powerful offense and a powerful defense. Someone who could consider himself as a devout master to the concept of football because within inside the confines of playing and being a football player, he is arguably one of the GOATs, the greatest of all time. See, I don't watch football. I don't watch football. I can't stand watching sports anymore. I don't give a fuck about watching the NFL. But I love football. And I only understand football from behind the face mask. I empathize what it takes to play the game. Because I played the game. So when you understand and realize that you are one of the ones, See, when you go out for high school football, and when you go out for school football, there's at least 60 young men there going out for football on the same team. The coaches have a standard of where mediocrity meets extraordinary. Out of 60 young men, there's 22 positions to represent this team in the face of battle. And every aspect of this coach's intention is to find the most extraordinary that rises above the line of mediocrity to start and be one of the ones to represent play on the field. And let me tell you something in real life. I've always been one of the ones. And there was always 10 beside me. And at any given time, at 11 on the field, you got to understand there was at least 40 others on the sideline watching one of the ones at the moment fight the good goddamn fight. So we got to stop cutting the bullshit. And acting like we don't understand the difference in being afraid to let your light shine. And we got to stop frowning upon that shit. Because now I got people that want to wrestle with me. And only because I have compassion and empathy, I don't thump them on their goddamn nose and say, man, stop fucking with me. See how that work? Do you see how it work? 
And as much as that could be offensive to you in the language, in the way I say it. See, I told you in the hero spin, in the hero spell, and how I work my hymn, the mighty spirit says, you will feel me more than you hear me. So the feeling of behind what I'm saying is what connects you to understand. See how that works. So in sports, where you're extraordinary, where you meet the line of mediocrity to go above and beyond, the coaches assign your position based on your potential to develop, to be extraordinary. In a way that you will rise above mediocrity and being mediocre, that's so much that he would have confidence to put you in in the fight of battle as a representation. See how this works. So in life, this is what the journey is about. Understanding oneself, knowledge of self. See, I'm talking about within me. That's what I see when I close my eyes. Tell me what it looked like. Somebody say, Trav, did you play basketball? I say, yeah, I played basketball. I, play, I ain't playing in school. I played in Little League, but I played on one of the greatest runs of 10, of 10 to 13, 15 runs of Little League team in Charlotte history, the Sugar Creek Lakers. I started. Say, I ain't know that. I said, yeah, I was pretty good, but I wasn't, I don't think I ain't want to play it in high school. I ain't go out for it in high school. They say, why? I said, well, I was an athlete. So I could play any sport, but I just knew I was extraordinary in football. And even though I was good and I ate in basketball, I could say I was mediocre. I wasn't good or bad. I'm going to do my thing when it's time to do my thing. So that's why you don't hear me talking about basketball. You don't hear me telling basketball stories. You don't hear me using the game of basketball to teach in logic. Why? Because that's not what I'm extraordinary at. See how they work. So the more and more you understand and know who you are, you can accept and let go of who you ain't. They say you want to be free. Well, what you want to be free from? I want to be free from expectations of someone else that ain't got a goddamn thing to do with me. Expectations is the seed of disappointment. You can't expect nothing of me. That ain't me, because everything that I am and everything that I wake up and strive to be they can depend on me. So the more and more you understand about who you are and what you is, the more and more you find your avenues and ways of always being extraordinary to always understand that you are enough. Each one teach one. Each one reach one. If you are that one, you are enough. The more and more you understand who you are, the more and more when thine eye be single and their body shall be full of light, the more and more when I say, man, close your eyes, and tell me what you see. And when you see a reflection of yourself that is greatest and powerful that you can ever imagine to be, you 
can be free from a whole lot of shit that you ain't. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> hey, look. Huh? See how that works? Do you see how that works? Deion Sanders said, for his quarterback, he preferred a dual family, raised child. Or house home. He prefer his offensive line to come from a dual family. Stomp down daddy. Rooted in principles. Right? So that's who he looked to recruit for his quarterback and his offensive line. And they said, well, how do he say that? I ain't say that. But one of the key elements in that phrase, nobody ever talked about in this whole thing. He said, the quarterback with a 3 5, because he got to be smart. The offensive lineman, at least a 3 3. He got to be smart. Nobody talked about the 3-5 and the 3-3. Three, three. We just talked about the single home family. We talked about the dual home family. How can he say that? That's kind of now. It's plenty of quarterback that's done been raised by single parent mamas. And they, he going to say he ain't going to get no black quarterback that's raised by just a mama. Man, that's some bullshit. See, like I told you, man. See how that work. See how that work. See, if you ever play football, quarterback, the position is deeper than a man throwing the ball. It's deeper than that. It's about having a sense of leadership, a certain mentality that's cultivated, that has to deal with pressure, that has to deal with a lot of things. And there's a lot of things that goes into the development of this type of mind and this type of leadership. And so we're listening to Deion Sanders, someone who's played on the highest level. And on every level, he played at the highest level. So much that he is arguably considered to be one of the goats. In his Hall of Fame speech, he spoke as a little child and said, y'all see a football player. I'm still a young man. They got picked at because my mama cleaned toilets at the hospital. And all I knew was I was extraordinary. I wasn't regular at sports. So I found a way to say, I'm finna use football and sports so that my mama would never have to work again. So within his journey of being, In his journey of being, all he ever dealt with in his path is exceptional, extraordinary. Overcasting young men of mediocrity. So when he talks about what it takes to build a championship team from the mentality of positions, we say he don't know what he's talking about, man. He's talking ignorant. He's talking ignorant. Man, this motherfucker ain't even never started no goddamn well, never made a team. And you question a master. who's getting paid millions of dollars to come kick some psychological judo in the locker room 
just as we're doing in this moment, to train 22 to 60 extraordinary young men. And we fathom about what it takes and he don't know. See, the most powerful thing was the 3-5 and the 3-3. Three, three. Do you know how extraordinary you have to have been a student your entire high school career? Do you know how extraordinary that you have to be to score a score on the SAT, to qualify, to even go to a Division I college? Do you know how extraordinary you have to be So how in the fuck can we disagree with a master of extraordinary from the goddamn perspective of mediocrity? How can that work? See, we come a time when you strive to be and you let your big old light shine because you rise above mediocrity. See, I say that's a very particular thing when you grow up in the mind and you develop to realize what the story of Jesus is really all about and you don't look at it from a child anymore. I say it's a particular thing, Al, when you realize that the Jesus story is just a fairy tale. Nothing ever existed. It's the point of the story that's where the magic, not the man, not the idea, not the fake reality, but the point of the story, the same point that's in every hero story. He's just a particular hero story that you have become affectionately told to love. But when you understand the point, And you realize that I'm one of the ones. And that's what the story is all about. And you begin to rise above mediocrity to let your big old light shine. Then you get done just like the story. They're getting ready to crucify your ass. See, the irony is, I don't believe in it because I be living in it. See how that work? You see how that do you see how mediocrity has become the norm? Do you see how now I begin, I begin to come a villain in a conversation or a situation because I became like I'm being overbearing or I'm being arrogant because I'm arguing with somebody who ain't never started a football game in their entire life, who ain't never started no competitive shit in their entire life. They ain't even made a motherfucking 2.0 and they arguing with me about what it takes to be in a stadium with 300 people calling your name and you know that the whole team is depending on you with the motherfucking game on the line. I dare argue with this motherfucker. Now dare somebody tell me, Trav, you wrong, man. He got a point. That's where mediocrity have become. Mediocre. Rise above that shit. If you feel like it ain't your lane, get out of it. Find what you're good at. Let your light shine. Poke your chest out. Walk tall. That's what this shit is all about. If I'm in a room and I'm representing manhood and you don't wake up every day to run the play, and you don't realize and understand, man, that on top of you, your woman and your children depend on you. And you are rooted down, man, to hold them up. And they say a man is real as his reason. So every day I wake up, man, with a reason, man, for my wife and my children. So I wake up as a representative of manhood. I wake up as a representative of fatherhood. I wake up as a representative of brotherhood. 
So when I'm representing in a circumference of my reality and you ain't committed to be one of the ones, I ain't even got to say it. A mediocre motherfucker, no. Shut the fuck up and let me represent what's real. Because I ain't just talking from an idea. I'm talking about what I live. That's what hero training is really all about. And if you can feel it, then you can deal it. I love y'all, man. We're going to get out of here, man. We're going to get out of here. I done got it tense on their ass tonight. I done got it tense. Blow. I got to go on my phone to see the comments. Blow, I love you, man. Best rapper I know. Blow. Love. Kathy, what's up, Kathy? Thank you for tuning in, sister. We all we got. We all we need. I kick my judo, man, anywhere in real life. Fuck this phone. Fuck this show. I kick it everywhere I go. And I say that because that brings up a connotation of rage and anger. Some people perceive it as negative. Well, that's what I intend for it to be. Because if you understand how it works, you got to realize that it takes negative and it takes positive to create power. And see, we're in a time where mediocrity rules. And in mediocrity, see, you understand, negative always seems to have the most influential impact on our people. So if I stand up here and I really try to talk power, don't nobody want to listen to me. But if I say fuck this and fuck that and I get mad and I show a little rage, they say, oh, he negative. And then sometimes they still cut it off. So it's like, damn if I do, damn if I don't. But shit, it feel good when I do. So guess what? I won't stop. See how that work. <laughs> you see how that shit work, man. You see how that work, man. Hey, that's real shit right there, man. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Yeah, man, I love anybody. Hey, man, hey, man, drop a comment, man. I love you. I'm going to share my song, girl, man. You know what I mean, man? I ain't bored that. Hold on. Yo, that's how we going to do it. I'm going to get out of here one more time on my jam, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 Hey man, this is a hit right here, man. Hey man, this song means something to me for real, man. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something for real. My mama inspired this song, man. I had a hard felt conversation with my mama, man. That was real, man. On a whole nother level, man. And when I hung up that phone, man, it was the first time I ever had a conviction to sing. You know what I mean? And, 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 and this all special too, man. And my mama's birthday is February 25th. So I want to end the show out by telling my mama happy birthday. Mama, I love you. She is a VR. Her best life, eh? Won't you be here to be free? I'm saying, Mr. Leo, visit me. It's important to know because you already been free. Do you know? Do you know? September, 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 what is the night? And look, and my mom is the guy for her birthday. See how that worked right there, man. And now if you just saw that, I can't make this shit up. If you just saw how that fell, you got to know how the spirit worked, man. I'm talking about this mighty breath in me, man. I'm talking about the influence, man. They say it's power in the tub, man. You got damn right in here, man. I be blowing them hero spells all over this motherfucker, man. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Hey man, if you think you can outdance me on my own beat, man, you out your mind, man. Let me tell you something, man. Hey man, I'm a fool with this shit, man. And I'm extraordinary. And I can't even act like I am. I know that shit. I'll see y'all next Thursday. I love you.